Up to this day, we treat depression according to monoamine theory. We believe that depression is caused by deficiency of neurotransmission, which can be caused by low levels of serotonin and norepinephrine and to a less extent dopamine in the synapse. So we believe that depression is caused by decreasing amount of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapse. So how to treat depression? The most obvious approach is to increase the amount of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapse. And drugs that cause increase in serotonin or norepinephrine in the synapse we call antidepressants. To serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors belong venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine, duloxetine, levomilnasepram, and milnasepram. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors have two mechanisms of action. First of all, they inhibit norepinephrine transporter. And to explain this, we have to know how adrenergic neurons work. So we have presynaptic neuron, synapse, and postsynaptic neuron. Adrenergic neurons uptake tyrosine. Once tyrosine appears inside the neuron, tyrosine under cohydroxylation by red limiting enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase with formation of L-DOPA. Then L-DOPA by DOPA decarboxylase is converted to dopamine. Once dopamine is formed, vesicular monoamine transporter puts dopamine inside the vesicles. In the vesicles, dopamine molecules undergo conversion to norepinephrine. And in this form, norepinephrine is stored inside the neuron. But once depolarization occurs, neuron pushes vesicle into the synapse. We call this process exocytosis. As a result, vesicle becomes destroyed and norepinephrine molecules income to the synapse. On postsynaptic neuron, we have numerous adrenergic receptors. It's alpha-1 receptor, beta-1 receptor, and beta-2 receptor. Once norepinephrine molecules appear in the synapse, most of them immediately bind to adrenergic receptors. With binding, they activate adrenergic receptors, and the activation of adrenergic receptors improve mood and increase energy. Some of the norepinephrine molecules bind to alpha-2 receptor on presynaptic neuron, which is autoreceptor. With activation, this receptor inhibits the exocytosis of norepinephrine vesicles into the synapse. So, this receptor provides reciprocal regulation. But what happens to norepinephrine molecules that simply did not have time to bind to any receptor? On presynaptic neuron, we have norepinephrine transporter called NAD. This transporter uptakes free norepinephrine molecules and delivers them back to the presynaptic neuron, where the big bad boy monoamine oxidase B waiting for them. Most of the delivered norepinephrine molecules have a tragic fate. Monoamine oxidase uptake and destroy them. But some norepinephrine molecules are able to slip away from monoamine oxidase and such molecules income to norepinephrine molecules inside the vesicles, thereby replenishing norepinephrine pool. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors inhibit the function of NAD transporter. With inhibition of NAD, the reuptake of norepinephrine into the presynaptic neuron decreases, so more norepinephrine molecules will remain in the synapse where now these free norepinephrine molecules begin to bind to adrenergic receptors, thereby additionally stimulating them. This time, because norepinephrine transporter is now blocked, in the same fashion even more norepinephrine molecules accumulate in the synapse. The higher the amount of norepinephrine molecules in the synapse, the higher the stimulation of adrenergic receptors, and thereby, potentially, the better becomes the mood and also the more energy increase. So, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors inhibit the function of norepinephrine transporter. 
This cause decrease in reuptake of norepinephrine from the synapse, thereby the amount of norepinephrine molecules in the synapse increase, and the higher the amount of norepinephrine molecules in the synapse, the higher the adrenergic effect, and thereby the better becomes the mood and the more energy increase. But also, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors inhibit serotonin transporter. And to explain this, we have to know how serotonin neurons work. So we have presynaptic neuron, synapse and postsynaptic neuron. Serotonin neurons uptake tryptophan. Once tryptophan appears inside the neuron, tryptophan undergo hydroxylation by rate-limiting enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase with formation of serotonin. Once serotonin is formed, Vesicular monoamine transporter puts serotonin inside the vesicles, and in this form, serotonin is stored inside the neuron. But once depolarization occurs, neuron pushes vesicles into the synapse. We call this process exocytosis. As a result, vesicle becomes destroyed, and serotonin molecules income to the synapse. On postsynaptic neuron, we have numerous serotonin receptors, and once serotonin appears in the synapse, most of them immediately bind to serotonin receptors. With binding, they activate serotonin receptors, and activation of serotonin receptors improve mood and increase energy. Some of the serotonin molecules bind to serotonin 1 beta receptor on presynaptic neuron which is autoreceptor. With activation, this receptor inhibits the exocytosis of serotonin vesicles into the synapse. So, this receptor provides reciprocal regulation. But what happens to serotonin molecules that simply did not have time to bind to any receptor? On presynaptic neuron, we have a serotonin transporter called SART. This transporter uptakes free serotonin molecules and delivers them back to the presynaptic neuron, where the big bad boy monoamine oxidase A waiting for them. Most of the delivered serotonin molecules have a tragic fate. Monoamine oxidase uptake and destroy them. But some serotonin molecules are able to slip away from monoamine oxidase and such molecules income to the newly formed serotonin molecules, thereby replenishing serotonin pool. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors inhibit the function of serotonin transporter. With inhibition of SART, the reuptake of serotonin into the presynaptic neuron decreases, so more serotonin molecules will remain in the synapse where now these free serotonin molecules begin to bind to serotonin receptors, thereby additionally stimulating them. This time, because serotonin transporter is now blocked, in the same fashion, even more serotonin molecules accumulate in the synapse. The higher the amount of serotonin molecules in the synapse, the higher the stimulation of serotonin receptors, and thereby, potentially, the better becomes the mood and the more energy increase. So serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors inhibit the function of SART transporter. This causes decrease in reuptake of serotonin from the synapse, thereby the amount of serotonin molecules in the synapse increase, and the higher the amount of serotonin molecules in the synapse, the higher the serotonin effect, and thereby the better becomes the mood and the more energy increase. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors are considered a relatively safe antidepressants, but they also have side effects. First of all, because serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors cause increasing amount of norepinephrine in the synapse, they increase adrenergic stimulation, and usually this cause increase in heart rate. Recall that blood pressure is equal to cardiac output on systemic vascular resistance, and cardiac output is a stroke volume on heart rate. As we see, with increase in heart rate, cardiac output increase, 
and thereby blood pressure increase, so hypertension develops. So because serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors cause increasing amount of norepinephrine in the synapse, heart rate increase, and with increase in heart rate, hypertension develops. Also, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors cause increasing amount of serotonin in the synapse. This can cause overstimulation of serotonin receptors, and excessive stimulation of serotonin receptors can cause sexual dysfunction. Overstimulation of serotonin receptors can cause serotonin syndrome. If patient intakes just serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, the chance for serotonin syndrome to develop is relatively small. But if we prescribe serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors in combination with monoamine oxidase inhibitors, now it becomes dangerous. Because MAO inhibitors block any possibility to destroy excessive serotonin molecules inside the presynaptic neuron. And with decrease in serotonin degradation, the total serotonin pool increase, and thereby the amount of serotonin molecules that presynaptic neuron release into the synapse increase. With increasing amount of serotonin in the synapse, the stimulation of serotonin receptors increase. And now, with such overstimulation of serotonin receptors, the chances of serotonin syndrome greatly increase. So, prescription of serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors with MAO inhibitors can be quite dangerous. So, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors cause increasing amount of serotonin in the synapse, and this greatly increase the risk of sexual dysfunction and usually it's anorgasmia, which is inability to have a proper orgasm. Also, with the increase in serotonin in the synapse, the risk of serotonin syndrome increase, and serotonin syndrome manifests with hypothermia, muscle rigidity, myoclonus, and also it can cause rapid fluctuations in the mental status and vital signs. Also, we have to remember that prescription of serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors with MAO inhibitors greatly increases the risk of serotonin syndrome. Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, together with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are considered the safest antidepressants. And because of this, we have many disorders where they are considered the first-line drugs in treatment. First of all, it's a major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. Also, we use them in diabetic neuropathy to decrease neuropathic pain. And the drug of choice in this case is duloxetine. We use them in panic disorder as a first-line drug for long-term therapy. But acutely, once episode happens as immediate drug, we use benzodiazepines. Also, we use venlafaxine in social anxiety disorder. They are considered a drug of choice in post-traumatic stress disorder. And also, in management of fibromyalgia, we can use duloxetine and milnasopram, simply because they decrease neuropathic pain. As we see, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors are used in management of neuropathic pain, as well as tricyclic antidepressants, but because tricyclic antidepressants have more side effects, usually we prefer serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors.